In this section, you'll learn about the art of gesture drawing. Gesture drawing helps artists capture the essence, the energy, or the expressive quality of the subject or subjects. Gesture drawing can help show action within a scene, such as a park where people or animals are playing or moving around. It is also a helpful way to capture the form of the subject. In other words, we want to draw the gesture of the object, animal, or person. A gesture is not meant to be polished. We are not rendering out the form. However, it is a helpful first step in drawing. Gesture drawing by itself can lead to some fun, energetic, and dynamic results. Once you pull or push a gesture into more of a sketching stage, you're slowing down and spending more time on that drawing. A lot more detail is added when we are in a sketching stage. When gesture drawing, we have to keep a gesture to a minimal time to force us not to worry about the detail. The overall gesture of the action or form is so important. You don't want to slow down and worry about detail just yet. In this series, you will follow along with me as we draw gesture drawings of man-made and organic objects. We'll draw a gesture of animals, a gesture of cityscape, and we'll take a look at nature and landscapes. If you don't want to follow along just yet, you can watch the video lessons to learn from them and then draw later on your own, after finding an original subject or scene. Or you can look at the example photos that we've provided as support files in this course. Relax as you learn in this series and remember that the gestures are not meant to be polished drawings. We are wanting to capture the gesture of that subject and have some fun along the way. Keep it loose, keep the time frame minimal, and remember that everyone's results will vary according to their skill level. And also, practice, practice, practice. Let's get started. All right, so um, here's a standard household item. Um, anything you find around the house uh, will do nicely. And I stop and think, you know, what's the weight of this? What am I trying to describe? Uh, you know, it's a harder, crisper uh, item. It's plastic. It has a little bit of a shine to it. I mean, drawing from my shoulder, um, you know, I think, you know, how large is my paper? Where am I going to put this item? Am I going to fill up the page? You know, I think of the composition. All right, take your stick or your charcoal and you know constantly move up and down. Okay, there's a time and a place to be really tied in, and then you can you know choke down on your your pencil. You know, trying to find different lines, different you know thicknesses. You can use the entire um, side of a piece of uh, charcoal to get very you know large um, masses. So again, always think you know what is the line or type of mark that I'm going for. All right, so start here. Now I'm going to give a fair amount of energy or weight uh, to this bottom as I come up because it, it is. It's an it's an item that's weighted down on the bottom. All right, it comes up. I'll try to mirror this side. I'll work on it at the same time. All right, constantly looking at the item. Okay, All right, comes up. There's a little bit of a, a bulge here. How am I going to describe that? doesn't have to be perfect. Very quickly, I'm going to come down this side because I see this more as a shadow side. I'll give a little bit of an indication of uh, some of the things going on. So, and we have this top part, you know, more mechanical. How are you going to describe the mechanics of that? All right, again, we're not trying to make this perfect. It's a gesture. A very quick gesture, very quick understanding of what this item is. A little bit of shadow, a little bit more shadow. I'm going to get that nice. There we go. I want a little bit more action, a little bit more energy on this trigger. All right. And that wraps it up. So with gesture drawing, you really want to stop and think, what is this item made out of? All right, earlier, we had a, a harder plastic item. 
um, you know, think about, you know, what's the weight of the item? Does it have action? You know, is it soft? Is it hard? Is it metallic? Uh, think about, you know, what kind of sound it would make if you, you know, tapped on it. Now, of course, this is extremely uh, plush or soft and fuzzy, so you want to sort of try to um, capture some of that um, in, the, the, in the gesture drawing or get the essence of that. All right, so <clears throat> a little more complicated. Um, again, uh, you know, think of your full page. Um, again, drawing from the uh, the arm, and I'll start this gesture drawing uh, very lightly. There's this, all right, a large mass, and a gesture drawing is meant to be very quick, very quick. Right? I'm I'm thinking right now. I, I want to get a little bit of weight. Uh, what is up under this this foot? Come over here to the other foot block that in again I'm thinking you know soft I'm thinking what is this made out of I'm thinking how can I simply right, describe some of the properties all right of this teddy bear this nice scarf that he's got on that comes down here I'll notice how I'm continually moving you know, my charcoal, I'm looking constantly for a line. You know, what's that line going to be? Is it thick? Is it thin? I feel like there's a lot of action in this scarf, so I'm going to make sure to... Okay, a little bit of his arm here, it comes out. And... So again, we're not trying to copy it. We're just simply giving a gesture, an essence of this teddy bear. He's got a nice little snout here we'll put in. Lots of action. Try to find your action. Where is your action at? A lot of folds. A lot of folds. Come back in and reestablish a few things that I've laid in here. That's a little arm here. So a decent gesture, establishing uh, you know your action line, um, coming in continually moving, you know thinking, you know how can I describe this item? Um, so we'll see you on the uh, next lesson, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, gestures again. For this gesture, what I'll use is a charcoal pencil. Uh, we talked about that in the supply list. Uh, it's just compressed charcoal. Um, so I have less uh, side to go on, but still, um, I can make you know a thick, heavy mark by turning it on its side. Uh, because it has a nicer tip, I can get a little bit of a thinner, nicer line. All right, so let's take a look at this shoe again. I think about, you know, what's it made out of? What's the weight? How can I, you know, quickly and easily describe um, this item and this fabric, all right? So, <clears throat> again, you know, drawing from the shoulder, all right, we're going to move fairly rapidly here, and I'm going to sort of sketch in, right, and pick a nice line. Think speed, not accuracy. Move around your entire drawing. It's nice action here. 
come in and describe the back of this heel of this shoe, the much darker, thicker mark. And you'll see at times I feel it's very necessary to move rapidly through the drawing. And then there'll be times when I want to slow down a little bit. All right. Taking a look at these eyes and quickly flipping my pencil back around. It's nice shoelaces, getting the gesture of the shoelaces as they dive, you know, in and out, right, undulating uh, up and over each other. Uh, it's a very nice point of action. Uh, it's a very nice point of uh, tension. It's a great area to work on your line work. And this is the front of the shoe. So again, I'm going to reestablish a little bit of a thicker, heavier line and let it taper off as it goes further back. I'm going to reestablish some of this action. There's a nice little kind of a racing stripe on that shoe. I'll just let that fade out into almost nothingness. And I will hint at some of the stitching. And I will hint at a little bit of the shadow as it comes across and catch some of the folds. And I'll even throw in a nice little shadow. We'll take a look at a few more different ways to look at a gesture, but um, this should start giving you a good idea. And again, remember, just watch what I'm doing over and over, and this is something that will take time and practice, but it's something that's fun to do, and um, it can be quite expressive. So here we have a obviously a, a harder item. Right? It's a plastic item, so a lot more geometric. Um, and I'm using a uh, Conte. It's very similar to charcoal that we uh, covered in the materials. So. Working on the front of the truck, all right, thinking of the, the sort of the grill. How am I going to describe this? Again, our goal isn't to make it, you know, perfect. This um, isn't a sketch. Right? It's a gesture. We are capturing the gesture all right, of this toy or the item. You see me rapidly moving from, you know, using the side of it to a more, you know, straight, uh, kind of a tighter line.
and you saw I just switched uh, to another Conte. It's slightly uh, more redder uh, in nature, and that's fine. Again, let these drawings be uh, expressive. Let them have a certain amount of looseness to it. And I'll throw a drop shadow up under this guy to ground it. And So I hope you learned a lot from these gesture drawings. Remember, draw from your arm, uh, draw from your entire body. Uh, don't be afraid to move quickly, um, have expression, um, have a sense of you know, thick, thin, light, dark, uh, soft, fuzzy. And always consider, you know, what is the object made out of? Always consider that. Um, so we'll see you in the following lessons. Uh, we'll discuss more about drawing. So let's just keep working on a few more different ways I think about doing gestures. So, um, you know, I've added some tools. I've got some uh, different erasers and some different size, thickness, you know, charcoals. Um, so this is a little more sort of free form, all right? So let's just get going here. So while working on this gesture, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, I know I've mentioned it before, but sometimes it's just all about line. So I'm really trying to capture that quality of the line, and what can that quality be? Thick, thin, uh, fast, slow, sharp, fuzzy, you know, hard, crisp. And I think that's part of the fun with uh, dealing with gestures. And you can see me here, I'm very rapidly moving, trying to throw in some tone. And as you can see, I'm using that charcoal in different ways. I'm using it on its edge. I'm flipping it over on its side, getting larger masses. And right here, I just grabbed a softer piece of charcoal to get a little bit darker on that bottom plane where the pear is carrying all the weight. I want to try to move through a drawing rapidly enough where I'm not drawing one area to a finish and then moving on to another one and completing that area. So you can see me in this sort of move um, you know, rapidly from one object to the next. Or what I'm trying to do is build them up at the same time. Very rapidly throwing in some shadow. You saw me throwing in some mass tone. I'm trying to get that nice sense of light. And you'll see me quickly unify every once in a while with my hand or like I just did a paintbrush. So an eraser is a great drawing tool in and of itself. So you'll see me come through here and start to pull out highlights, start to make accents, and really use that eraser like its own drawing tool. Again, what kind of line can you get with an eraser? And I'm just trying to break some things up and add a little bit of action and some emotion into the drawing.
I think an eraser can be just as powerful a drawing tool as the actual pencil. So this is just another way of approaching a gesture drawing. There's really no right and wrong tools. Um, I get to a point where I'm working with gesture where I'll use a chamois, an eraser, uh, two or three kinds of erasers, a charcoal, pencil, pastel. Um, you know, anything you can add to the mix, um, you know, you're just adding more variety and more possibilities for, uh, you know, artistic expression. So we'll do a few more of these uh, using different materials, but again, gesture, to quickly capture the essence um, of these objects, these items, um, you know, add a little bit of action to them. And I think we've created an interesting drawing uh, where we're, you know, lightly using this as reference, but we're not copying it. And we get an idea of apple and uh, pear, uh, of drawing, of form, but also the idea of it's open and it has a certain human expression to it, which sometimes can be quite nice. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Right. So today we're on location, and I think it's a great practice to find a, you know, a seat somewhere, whether it's in a mall or a common area or a park is great or a zoo is great. So we're going to work on some basic gestures of things that are moving or in motion, uh, live objects. So right now, uh, I'm at a park and we've got some geese and ducks in the background. So I'm going to try to capture that movement. Before I do this, I'm going to sort of sit down for a moment and study what I'm looking at. And we're going to go through a couple of different ways to approach um, these gestures with moving objects. So I'm just going to sort of loosen up. I've got a nice geese in the background. It's got some nice shade up under its undercarriage. And I'm thinking feathers. So I'm trying to be light. I'm trying to leave open areas. And right now he's... kind of pose like this and he's moving pretty rapidly so I'm trying to just simply capture an essence of him or her and I'll give a little bit of a ground plane So while I'm drawing this, at, at different times I have to capture the animal sort of in different poses. Um, and what I mean by that is sort of sections, like this is just a quick gesture of the head. But I captured this at a certain moment when this animal was in that position. And the animal was bobbing its neck up and down. So I just sort of chose to try to take a mental image of that neck and lay it down in this position. So one can say I sort of took the head from a pose, the neck from another pose, and the body from a third pose. So I was sort of able to put it together. And that's something that you're going to have to work on doing and building up. So let me just keep drawing and we'll talk about a few concepts. Now I have a group of geese that are pretty rapidly moving towards me. They have a very 
you know, rounded sort of organic body. Always think about if I were describing this to someone that perhaps couldn't see, you know, what kind of adjectives would I use to describe this animal? And that will help you draw it. So really all of his feathers are pushed up on the side or behind him. And he's got this nice elongated neck. Again, I'm capturing sort of his neck and his head almost at two different times, or we could say positions. I'm trying to understand uh, where's my light source. They've got this interesting little development here on their forehead that's quite nice. Dude, he's moving too fast. So we have a situation where we have some ducks that are sitting here. And one thing we can talk about are structural drawing concepts. Is you can also think about it when doing a gesture is, well, what's the overall shape? And these seem to have sort of an egg-like shape. You could say with sort of a tail or wedge coming off of it. And then there's sort of a... I'll call it sort of a Hershey Kiss-esque shape, which comes into a nice S shape. And then we have a sphere and essentially a triangle coming off. So that's very structural in nature. So I recommend that you find a series of shapes that you can keep in your mind's eye that you can kind of work with. And these shapes will change depending on the animal you're drawing, but also you'll find different shapes within each individual duck. But overall, you could say that they have a general you know, shape and structure that you can define this way. So we've got another type of bird that's back there in the background that's moving quite a bit. So for me, it's a similar kind of jelly bean or egg shape with a reverse kind of hook or wedge on it. And then its neck sort of comes shooting out of the bottom 
and it has a sort of a different head shape and kind of this elongated beak with much, much longer legs. But if I take the time to think about this, and again, we could say this is the very beginning of what you might uh, think of as structure or structural drawing. So I keep that in my mind's eye, and now I've got another position with this bird. Again, he's moving a lot, so I'm going to try to pick at what, what, what point, and I may have to change it, so he's changed enough. These beautiful feathers pushing off the back, I'm going to try to capture those. I'm going to try to keep this in mind while I'm drawing, and he's moving very, very, very rapidly. I'm actually going to have to, turning my head immensely, All right, it comes out very nice neck, pulls around. He's sort of got his head tucked into that neck. The neck is sort of tucked in and up under all of this feather structure. And at this point, he's about, you know, moved off. I can almost hardly see him, but I can remember in my mind's eye enough as well as combining it with my understanding of his overall sort of structure, I can still see him enough to start to piece this together. And he has a lot of texture in these legs. I'm going to try to capture some of that. It's a very We're on the back side or underside of him. There's some shadow in here. I'm going to try to, to force a very strong leg. It was very strong or hard lines um, to sort of indicate the energy or movement. This bird seems to always be uh, moving and sort of on the go with these nice, uh, interesting, you know, feet that he keeps, you know, plopping down up under him in this manner to support his uh, main structure. And at this point, the bird has kind of moved on. Um, and I just have to keep in mind, you know, the fact that I've studied him here for a few minutes and I can take a glimpse of another bird that's similar. Or if he comes back over, I can kind of fill in some of the blanks. But I think this gives you a, a good idea of working with a moving object. So this gives you a broad understanding of shapes. So let's take this shape and sort of move it in our mind's eye. If it's more um, looking at us, right, it'd be more like this. All we have to do is move these shapes around. Now, this has given us a very sort of brief understanding of these shapes or the structure um, of some of these animals. And in another lesson, I cover the idea of shapes and structure. Uh, I cover the idea of shapes and structural drawing uh, more intensely. So the thing I enjoy about doing these gesture drawings uh, from moving animals or people or things is that um, you're really forced to concentrate on the object. And within this animal, I found these uh, very interesting details to focus on as an artist. The weight or mass of the bird, the overall shapes, um, the line quality, what I'm trying to say with that line quality, capturing the energy of this animal as it moves around creating spaces that are, you know, darker, heavier, um, spaces and lines that are lighter, thinner, more open. So I hope you've learned some new concept and some ways of dealing with and thinking about working in nature and with moving objects. And this should have helped quite a bit. Again, I can't stress enough how practice is going to make perfect. It's common for me to do sketchbook drawings like this, um, you know, constantly. So keep up the good work. We'll see you in the next lesson.
So we're going to draw these swans and try to capture this gesture of them. Now, you know, these animals are constantly moving. So again, I'm going to go kind of right for the overall shape. And I'm going to try to capture, you know, different moments. So he's got his wing up. He's grooming. And that may not be that way forever. If it's that way and you like it, for that second or two or three that it's up there like that capture that moment and almost sort of think about pasting it in or sort of collaging it together with other moments so I can see his tail feathers are sort of flared out at this particular moment now I can't see them but I can remember them and I'll sort of hint at those and think, you know, how can I show a feathery mass? You know, what's the texture of this animal? How can I capture it? It's a very, very uh, large sort of chest or undercarriage. It's very rounded in nature. And right now he's grooming himself, so his neck is stuck back there in the back. I'm not sure if I want that pose or not, so I'll focus on his feet and see if he presents me with another pose for his head. Draw it as you see it. I can't see his feet. I can only see a little bit, so I'll hint to the grass line back here. It's this other foot. It's in the back. I'll draw it lighter. Again, I'll try to hint at some of this nice overlapping texture that I see in the legs. And every once in a while, I catch a glimpse of it in the feet. All right, so now he's got his neck completely different. And I'll say, okay, I really like that. So I'll try to capture that head. And you see me push it up, right? Initially I had the head here. I feel like it's a little bit longer, and I'm going to try to push that up quickly. And he sort of has this beak like this. He's not in this exact position. I'm having to study the bird. And try to piece this together when and where I can. So making a decision, how can you show foliage right, on a tree, or how can you show feathers? Very similar in nature. He just has all these feathers stacked up. And I'm simply repeating a mark. You, know, you can find or pick your own mark. And just sort of think about repeating that in certain areas. I'm not interested in putting it everywhere. The detail usually delineates in a shadow, and I'm just going to let it delineate out. I'm going to add some more feathers. He's got some feathers kicking back here, as, you know, as the other side of him. And I can no longer really see his beak, and I, that's okay. I feel like I've got enough done to at least give somebody the idea or give myself the idea the overall gesture and movement of this bird right, so right now he's splayed his head and I'm going to try to do a quick gestural study if I can and it looks like I won't be able to maybe we'll see if he pulls his head but if you see a point it's back again he's got this nice beak and I'm just going to try to, if I can, do a head study real quickly as he's moving around. And at this point I can't see it, so I'll just stop, and I'll wait, and I'll hope that he'll get back in that position. 
or a position close enough that I can start to stitch this together. Now, this is part of the fun of drawing this way is there's an unpredictability of an animal or a person. You're, you're not controlling them. You're watching them from afar. And when you see something or a gesture or a movement or a motion that inspires you as an artist, try to capture it. And if it goes away, you either have the ability to piece it back together from further study of that person or animal or object um, and or you can try to get in a habit of sort of almost visually memorizing you know some of these shapes and drawing from your memory as well there's a nice little stripe across the beak Again, I'm still trying to stay in a gesture. Some people would say it's kind of pushing more toward a sketch, but I'm just, there we go. I'm waiting. So that this moment he's presented me with a little more of what I'm, there we go. So his head's a lot longer. I had it a little bit thinner. It's a sort of an egg-like shape. And he's got this nice sort of jaw sort of like area throughout here. And again, I can't see him. I'm waiting. I'm hoping. trying to make my mark for what this feather structure sort of looks like. And again, I'm not copying. Right? I'm just simply trying to gather information slowly and rapidly and sort of piece it together in a, a reasonable understanding of what this animal is and how it moves and I'll just let this drift right out into line and just let that sort of be as a secondary study of the head uh, beak sort of neck structure or anatomy of this animal so each time you go out on the field and do this you'll be be presented with unique um, you know, visual imagery, uh, unique situations where an animal or person is moving. And this just sort of shows you my working process. When an animal or a person is moving, I sort of have to pick and choose what I'm going to work on. And I think about, you know, why am I going to work on that? And usually it's because that person or animal has presented me with the best possible angle at that time or there's a certain gesture or movement that they have that I want to capture so it's my job to kind of get these things and try to sort of put them together not necessarily in a finished picture but in a in a study possibly in a picture but more like a study and these studies are meant to help us sort of better understand in general capturing drawing capturing gesture and a lot of the times these studies will lend themselves to larger paintings that are more detailed or drawings or they will spark ideas or emotions that an artist might want to explore. I think it's a really great practice and the only way to get better is to practice. So for this lesson, I'm going to start with a gesture. We're having a landscape. And I'm going to open up a little bit and use some different tools. I'm going to use vine charcoal, graphite pencil, compressed charcoal, and eraser, and chamois. All right, so let's get started. All right, I'm going to try to really quickly capture this 
sort of horizon line here, this uh, foreground, and we've got this nice tree here to try to quickly capture some of the texture, the overall lean to it. I might exaggerate it a little bit. And I'm going to quickly switch over to the side of my vine charcoal. I'm going to switch over to a much darker, denser charcoal, and that would be the compressed. And I'm going to try to establish the shadow side, just a touch more. Again, moving quickly, trying not to get uh, you know, locked into a sketch. We're just still trying to do sort of a quick overall gesture. And I'll come in very quickly and try to hit the darkest darks. <clears throat> and there's a nice shrub line back here, which helps separate our foreground uh, from I guess you would call that uh, our middle ground I would say really nice shadow pulling off over here and I'll let that run off the page I'll switch back over quickly to my vine charcoal that vine charcoal is less dense and it's not as dark and it's very easy to pull a highlight or mid-tone out of our vine charcoal so there's this shrub line there now I'm going to switch back over to charcoal pencil try to grab a little more detail and dealing with the wind uh, and the elements is the fun of doing a drawing on location. just part of it. So I'm going to come in here real quickly and try to hint at the essence of some of these kind of grass-like uh, shrubs that are back here. Uh, I'll grab an eraser and this is a little bit harder uh, eraser um, than a kneaded eraser and I'm going to very rapidly just try to hint and pull out some of the highlights and I'm constantly thinking direction, wind, you know, what's the overall texture and try to capture that. I'll even cut back into this tree with this eraser and I'll move around this picture and try to pull out a highlight and I'll do the same thing up here in this tree very quickly. Yeah. How do I describe, without getting too detail oriented, the overall 
sort of fan nature of these leaves as they push out of the tree. They're sort of uh, fanning out. And if you'd like, um, I could sort of very quickly kind of come in with a much larger piece of charcoal. And there is a, there is a, a, a line back here that's our background, uh, way back here of a tree line. All I gotta do is I'll just add an essence of that tree line back there. And same thing, I can throw in the idea of a cloud or two back here. And I'll quickly probably take my hand. I will quickly take my hand and just sort of rub that out to get a quick idea of tone. And after I've got a little bit of that tone in there, I can you know, come in and indicate a little bit of light hitting on some of these cloud shapes. So we can come in with a chamois or an eraser and pull out some highlights from these clouds. And we're doing a gesture, so I'm not trying to copy. I'm just very quickly getting the essence uh, of them. And for me, that's a solid gesture where we're capturing the energy and the emotion of the, the plants, the environment, the wind and uh, taking a look at, at that gesture, that overall scene. All right, so let's work on a gesture of a cityscape with a little bit of, uh, you know, trees in it. Now, some artists define uh, a gesture and a sketch you know, differently. They're different things, but sometimes a line is sort of blurred between the two. So this might be a drawing that ends up being somewhere between a sketch and a gesture. Um, but I'm definitely not uh, interested in every bit of detail. I still want to capture the overall gesture of it. Um, but for this, I'm going to lay down some quick tone. Now we have another lesson that specifically deals with tone and working in a tone or working in a uh, reductive manner with tone. So this is sort of going to be a combination of some things that we have gone over with our gesture um, and some of that tone exercise. So I will throw down a real quick tone. And that's good enough for our purposes. And I'm going to start by throwing in sort of our horizon line or ground plane. There's a angle, then we have a piece of the park trail sort of comes around. And I'm going to kind of put our focal point, or what I see as our focal point, for this building. I'm going, to, I'm going to lay that in. And so I've moved from a more linear you know, line, working with the charcoal pencil, into working a little bit more with the side of the vine charcoal rapidly massing in shapes.
So I want to go for the masses first. There's a lot of detail on the top of this building. I'll hint at it, but I really want to get this main mass or main block. first. And let's take a look at some of the masses around it. So there's this nice side plane of this building over here. All I need to do is just put the entire mass in with the side of our <clears throat> charcoal, vine charcoal. And if I can find a shape and describe it as a mass, that is what I will do. The edge of the charcoal also does nice for dropping in a line. I'm not very concerned with where all these pillars line up. I'm just going to give the viewer an essence of where they are. Again, this is, should be somewhat between a gesture and a sketch, I'm not doing a rendering. <clears throat> and I'm gonna focus over here a little bit more on this sort of tree line. And if I need to, I'll actually push a tree or two or move it to where I need. All right, I'm going to draw this tree as if it's similar in nature to this first tree. In reality, it's very thin and very dead, with very little foliage, but I don't think that will work with the drawing. So I'll use this tree kind of as reference to sort of indicate that other tree. Okay, and we'll turn it from a dead tree into a live tree just by using this one here. Okay. And once I get the masses blocked in, I can then worry a little bit more about a little bit of the detail. I don't want too much. I still want it to read as a quick drawing, a quick gestural like drawing. I like to usually tone down that sky as it moves up, and quite often I will make it a little bit darker maybe than possibly it is in real life. That helps with the overall atmospheric perspective. And I'm just sort of going to unify everything again, moving quickly. I don't want it to get, I don't want a detailed drawing. And at this point I can come in with something simple like an eraser and start to think, where are my lightest lights? I can hint at those. There's another little building back here. I'll just barely ghost that in. And I want some of these edges to be lost and found. Some of them will be sharp and in detail, 
Others I will let diminish uh, almost into nothingness, right? It'll just fade off. And there's another tree line that I'll kind of hint at once we get up. All right, right through here. So I'll mass in that whole dark shape or mid-tone. Then I could come in with an eraser or my finger or a chamois and hint and let the eraser or the chamois do the work. You'll notice I'm not trying to you know, draw a leaf with the eraser, then another leaf. I kind of move the eraser or a chamois and let it pick up some, some highlights. I try to look at what that tree is and I try to say is there a overall mark or texture that will help to indicate the type of tree, uh, the movement, the, the texture of the actual leaf. I don't want to get locked into trying to draw a leaf. That's not what we're, we're here for right now. These trees are closer to us than the building, so I'm going to try to make more contrast in the trees, meaning a um, higher level of, or a higher range of light to dark. And I'm going to tone that down just a little bit, let it live in the background. And I'll indicate a few little lines. I don't want to overpower the tree, but I want to still give a little, little more indication of you know, structure, architecture. There's a lot going on. There's sort of a stairwell right here on this building, and I, I don't care about that. I'm just going to hint at an essence of some of the detail. All right, just hint at it. That's all we need. I have no, or very little, I'm gonna put another tree here, very little concern for the windows here. We don't need all that information. I'm gonna add another tree here. In reality, that tree isn't there, but compositionally, it makes sense. It gives me a nice overlap of the building, meaning the tree is overlapping it. It gives us a little bit more depth. I'll look at my light source and I'll very quickly sort of give an indication of that mass or direction of the light source through this mass of the shadow.
again, let that eraser do your work. You know, knead it out, and it will find a nice texture for you. So I have a rapidly moving cloud behind me, just like an animal, it is moving. I'm going to try to get the overall essence of some of these clouds. So I'll just pull out of that mid-tone. Again, a chamois works great. Eraser, quite nice as well. So with these clouds, we'll give a little bit of an indication of uh, underplane. That establishes our light. Yet again, we've established light with the masses and planes of the buildings. We've started to establish light with the texture uh, of the tree. The light's coming from always the left side in this particular case. If I want to pop the clouds out a little bit more, I can add some tone back there. And we can fuzz this up a touch and just come back in again. That would give some dimension to the clouds. And I like to sort of reestablish a little bit of the idea of the mass and architecture of the, uh, the building. And if I do indicate windows, it'll just be ever so slightly. So I'll work a little more on that, what we could call the ground plane of that cloud. I'll come back in, I'll fuzz it up. I'm not trying to copy the cloud, I'm just getting an essence cloud back there. And I'm changing my scenery based on what I, right, the artist, needs. Um, so for example, I've probably made it a little bit darker right through here than it actually is in the cloud. That's going to help pop out this entire side plane of the building. And I like to come in very quickly. With a line, just hint at some of this architecture. If I do hint at a window, it will be with a little detail, and I'm just, just barely hinting at it. You know, there's not a need for me to come in here and just try to lay in every window. Just an idea that there's windows. The viewer will pick that up and run with it. I'll hint at some of this sort of texture in this side part of the wall. I don't have to put in every single detail for the viewer to pick that up and understand that it's texture and they'll run with that. With their eye they'll add the texture in there. We don't
a little more clouds, a little more underplane. And um, at the point where I feel like this is good enough for a gesture or a study, or some people might call this a quick sketch. So we have kind of, you know, middle ground. Um, we definitely have background. I haven't put a whole lot of foreground in this picture. We could. I don't see it as necessary. I could put this nice lamp in front of me up here. But at this time, I'm happy with you know, the overall gesture or, or quick rendering of uh, this space. I feel like we've adequately captured what we need to. We're not rendering it. We're not drawing it. It's just sort of a sketch slash gesture. Um, I will hint at a little shadow in here pretty quick on these trees. And I'll leave that nondescript. Just let it melt in. And there's a little bit of shadow here under these trees. Kind of can't see them because of this wall. But I'll indicate just a little bit of that. And come in and break that sky up just a touch. And I think we're So, I hope you learned a thing or two that um, you could bring over from those initial lessons on gesture, and I hope you learned even more uh, with doing a gesture of what is a cityscape. And I recommend that you practice this a lot. Go to a park, go to your backyard, go to a public location, sit down, have fun with these concepts, these ideas. Be patient. And every drawing you do, you'll get an improvement, and it will be that much better. And I find that the more you improve, the funner and funner it will be. But that takes practice. So I'll see you in the next lesson.